Okay, March 16th, I think it is. Let's have a look. Yeah, Friday the 16th, 2018. Here we go, folks. This one, Wikipedia, Morgellons, is the informal name of a self-diagnosed skin condition in which individuals have sores that they believe contains some kind of fibres. Morgellons is a poorly understood, but the general medical consensus is that this is a form of delusional parasitosis. The sores are the result of compulsive scratching and the fibres, when analysed, turn out to originate from textiles. This, my friends, is total and utter bullshit. This is what you are being led to believe on the internet when you use a search engine to check on what more gallons is. Now, let's just go back. Search engine. First thing you come to, Morgellons. Controversial condition involving skin lesions and the belief that the skin is infected. No, not belief. It's a fact. Then you come to Morgellons disease. Treatment and symptoms. Hold on. Treatment for something that's not real? Really? Okay. Morgellons disease. Managing a mysterious skin condition. Mayo Clinic. Now, folks... You want to hear the conversation of a top world specialist in Lyme. This is my consultation. I want you to listen. Uh, No, not really. Where are you based? I'm located in Puerto Vallarta. Yeah. And this is Dr. Um, Morales. Yes, that is correct. Yeah. You're an Iliad specialist in Lyme, I believe. I am the... I'm sorry, I think you're breaking up. Let me see if I can move to a better spot to get a better signal. Is this any better? I think this is good. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm uh, Dr. Morales. I'm... Uh, I am the director of the Lyme Mexico Clinic, and I specialize in uh, infections in the blood. Yeah. So, so um, yeah, I think you're talking to the right person. Yeah, I mean, this has been a bizarre situation because i seen doctors in England, and I paid good money to see doctors in England, and they were uh, refusing me the Lyme test. And then eventually, after months of suffering with horrendous lesions and fatigue and pain and everything else, they decided to do one. And it came back part positive. And they said to me, oh, no, it's a negative result. I said, hold on. I said, I've researched all about Lyme disease, and I happen to know that you use a Western blot test and that it's, it's, not, it's not right. I said, not sensitive enough. Yeah. No. So that's, that's, that's the surface of things. Yeah, the, 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 the situation that's happening worldwide is much more complicated. But let, let, me, get, let me get some information out of, out of you first. Yeah. Um, and so what, what do you do? What do you work uh, at? Or, or I can't, you some background. I can't work at the moment. It's, it's, you know what? I cannot work. It's impossible for me to work. Because you, you, okay, but what did you used to do before this? I was a pr- producer. I'm, 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 I'm trying to get information like from environmental factors that could be added to your problem, like lead, uh, aluminum, uh, glyphosate, uh, you know, anything. So I'm, I'm going to ask questions like that to get information. Yeah, yeah. I was a producer and director before I became ill. Uh-huh. And were you involved in any... Uh, Film developing or use some uh, agents no, to develop? No, no, no. Okay. But I had undergone quite a lot of hospital tests and they did subject me to quite a lot of radiation. So I was concerned because of the amount of CT scans and a CT angiogram and then they did a, they, 
did a, a VQ scan using radioactive gases. They did lots of scans on me. And before or after? Before. And I... Why? What for? What for? What were they looking for? Well, I had clots on the lungs twice. And they couldn't... You had what? Clots on the lungs. Pulmonary, emboli- pulmonary embolism. Oh, okay. Twice. And they couldn't understand why. Because I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't do drugs. So they couldn't understand why. And then they did a V... They did a CT scan and it didn't show. They did a VQ scan and it showed a high probability of multiple clots on the lungs. And then they put me on anticoagulants. I went back again and then I was getting all kinds of horrendous symptoms. I was getting swollen abdomen and they did a... This all started off when they did um, a gastroendoscopy on me and they put a camera into my stomach. And as bizarre as it sounds and as science fiction as it sounds... I felt like they did something to me that day because my whole life turned upside down. And, right. and when he did the camera in the, in the stomach to check the stomach, I felt a sharp pain inside the stomach like never before, like somebody had stuck a knife in me. And when I came to, I asked him, I said to him, did you take a biopsy? And he said, no. I said, are you sure? And he went, why? I said, because I felt like you had stuck a knife inside my stomach. No, I didn't. And then after that, two days later, I started to get all these symptoms like my immune system had gone into overdrive because it was kicking things out the skin. There was debris in the bed, in the sheets. And I was thinking, where's this coming from? And it went on for months. My skin was crawling. So I don't know whether they, they did something or triggered something, but, you know, it was pretty sinister. And I do not know, the people I speak to around the world, and I've made lots of videos about this more gallons. And I speak to... No, I, I assure you that they didn't uh, uh, do anything to you, but that's how it feels, unfortunately. I know who this disease is, and I know that you, you know, you've been probably branded as psychiatric or self-inflicting wounds and all of that. Yeah, yeah. I know, that, I know that's not the case. And, 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 you know, unfortunately you went through a, uh, a procedure that uh, triggered uh, inf- uh, inflammatory response that you were already having with the uh, with the pulmonary embolism. Uh, so it this tells me that you probably have a, a, a transitory uh, vasculitis that was originally in your genes just as when you were born, but somewhere along the way you you got Lyme or you got Ornella or you got you got other infections. Uh, I, I don't know if you have uh, ever researched why infections are related to Bartonella, uh, but if you haven't, Lyme, is, Lyme isn't the only one. Like, you can find Treponema denticola, you can have uh, H. pylori, you can have... Uh, I, test, I tested positive for H. pylori. All right. So, so those things are just things to keep in mind in cases that have been treated for Lyme mm. and have not... Uh, uh, moved anywhere forward to the Morgellons because the Morgellons, the Morgellons should respond as, uh, 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 as effectively to get rid of uh, if you treat the Lyme. But if you treat the Lyme effectively, and when I mean effectively, I'm not talking about 21 days of toxic, I'm talking about effectively. Getting rid of the biofilms, stimulating the immune system, uh, eradicating the infection, and detoxify it. If you don't do all of those things effectively, then you you should. But if you have done all of those things for the Lyme and you still have Morgellon symptoms, then mm-hmm. it's something else. Yeah. Something else is triggering the Morgellons, and we have to find it. And like I said, there are other infections, even H. pylori. I, 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 I would try to get a hold of all of the possi- possible infections that would cause inflammation that would trigger more Morgellons. Now, there are other factors that also can stress the body to create inflammation, and at the end of the day, that inflammation is going to be combined with uh, so- sodium peroxide and collagen, and it's going to make fibers uh, of more gel. So what you want to do is try to uh, rule out all of the other possible scenarios, such as methyl amalgam that have mercury, such as mold environment, such as uh, glyphosate pesticides, 
corrosive materials, any of those things that you might be exposed to or have been exposed to in the past, yeah. those have to be addressed as well because this could also be triggered by an environment, environmental issue. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, what, what kind of a... Uh, First of all, can, can you give me a list of diagnoses besides Lyme that you have received over the years? Well, I had tested positive for um, ME some 10 years ago, myalgic encephalomyelitis. And for what, I'm sorry? Myalgic encephalomyelitis. Okay. They call it chronic fatigue syndrome, but I, I, I was... I was told that it was definite ME um, 10 years ago, but I coped and I carried on working and I was fine. But over the years, um, I had many investigations, many scans, many things that flagged up. How old were you, how old were you with the ME uh, and with the Um, About 42. And how, how old are you now? 56. Okay. But it, it, I kept getting all kinds of weird symptoms and, and nobody could ever put their finger on anything. But this was, this is just like science fiction because when this started, I bought myself a microscope and started to look at things underneath the microscope. And I was like, oh my goodness, how can my body make this kind of stuff? Yeah, it looks like insects almost. You even, you may even think that you're, you're, saying, you're dealing with parasites, but you're not. Well, the thing, the thing why I think parasites and the thing that, that I can't get my head around is whatever it is that's deeply embedded in the skin now, when I do certain things like a hot bath with Epsom salts or I massage coconut oil into the skin, these things come to the surface and they go straight back down under the skin if you don't remove them fast. Let me tell you something. Uh, I don't know how much you know about the physiology of the infection of Morgellons. Okay. Um, but Morgellons is not in the skin. It's inside of the cells. What Morgellons does is it infects the host cell yeah. inside of it, and it only leaves the nucleus of the cell intact. The rest of the cell... Inside of it, it replicates and it transforms from immature to mature uh, uh, bacteria, I'm sorry, to mature infection. Once that infection is uh, completely, uh, uh, completely overwhelming the cell, the cell it gets destroyed, You're the human cell. Yeah. When the human cell gets destroyed, all of the immature and mature uh, infection of, of Morgellons comes out to the extracellular space, where it there, where there it travels to the closest part of the of the lymphatic system and travels to the skin. And in the skin, we have collagen. And when it it mixes with the collagen and the sodium peroxide, it creates fibers. It can be several colors, usually red, blue, or gray. That's how it happens. So I hear a lot of people that they even scratch it so much and they try to rub it up. It will not be rubbed up because it's not in the surface. Yeah, you know, I had doctors calling me crazy and saying it's delusions of parasitosis. And I turned around and said, excuse me, I know my own body and I am sound of mind. So I'm not crazy. It's not delusional. But the thing is, when... Certain certain things happen with this, and I, you know, it's hard for me not to think it's parasite because when when I've grabbed one of these things, in my, I'm not saying it's that. Yeah, I'm not saying it's that. When I've when it's I've grabbed one of these hairs from the back, and I've pulled, and I have pulled, and I say hair because they come out like 12, 14 inches long. A hair, and when I've pulled the hair out. It is actually moving in front of my own eyes. Yeah, it might. It might. I agree. But every single... You, you may have had a microscope, but let me tell you what, uh, like, like, the places that universities and labs and big uh, labs in the US and uh, in Australia and, and 
and other parts of the world, they have placed these fibers moving still in the microscope and they're not parasites. They are not a, they are a mixture of chemical compounds with collagen and some uh, active ingredients. We, we don't know what it is, an infection one. It's not I keep thinking this is a man-made disease like AIDS was and people shoot me down in flames and I say well you know I'm not a stupid person I was in the military and I looked after the royal family in England and I know what goes on in this world sometimes people don't get told the entire truth these people that go on and rant and rave about chemtrails you know there is some truth in this they are spraying aluminium into the atmosphere they are dropping barium and mercury on us all but you know our bodies, we're living in the 21st century now. They weren't designed to be soaking up these toxins. And I just think the body is becoming something that it shouldn't be. And these things that the body's making at the moment with me, I went for a scan last year on my lung because my lung and my heart, I feel a lot of pain every now and then. And they did a scan on my lung last year and they said, oh, now we see a small nodule on your left upper lung. And I said, small nodule what does that mean is it cancer is it what is it and they said well it's only small but uh, we'll take a look at it again in 12 months time i know what it is it's this stuff growing inside of me tell me something um william uh, do you have any uh recollection of family members having any autoimmune issues none none of them at all I, i've got a healthy elder brother healthy elder sister healthy younger brother my mother's 80 my father passed away 21 years ago you know they were all fit healthy people and you and you say you've never been uh exposed to any toxic material well i don't know you know somewhere over the years could be pesticides could because be you're, you're, obviously you're talking about you know pen and all that yeah which everybody else is exposed to but uh, nobody else is getting more jealous. no this is what you this is, you, may, you may have some extra exposure of some sort. You see, when I was in the Air Force, my blood group was B positive. And there was some something in the 1980s where um, I contracted a sexually transmitted disease, syphilis. But I was treated immediately for it. Now... That you was know, it's just another infection that can also happen. Yeah, you know, it could have been sitting there waiting to erupt again, and something right. triggered it. For all I know, I don't know, but yeah. they they've tested me so, uh, since then, and all the tests have come back normal. You know, hepatitis, syphilis, HIV—they're all normal. So, what treatments have you done, William, for for Lyme? For Lyme. I've, I've done my own because these people, these charlatans in England, then they, they they will not be, you know. What 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 have been your own treatment? I started on doxycycline with um, two other antibiotics. Um, uh, one was for a parasite it begins with F. I can't remember the name of it now, but I did them strong antibiotics, five hundred milligrams, three times a day three tablets and I, it absolutely wiped me out i i was near enough you know unable to do anything so i i cut down on that but just recently i started a protocol that most people would be skeptical about but i think hand on my heart i think it's killing some stuff within the body because there's stuff coming out of the body at the moment what did you start it i started h2o2 Hydrogen yeah. yeah, food grade. <laughs> we do that. It's not, it, it works. Well, I, I started off on three drops three times a day, then four drops four, uh, three times a day. I'm now on 30 drops a day. But just recently, this pain in my heart and my, my left lung, it feels like there's something trying to rip, come out the chest. So I don't know whether it's killing this stuff and this stuff is trying to come out and I'm detoxing or what, I don't know. So that's the issue, um, William, that um, you treated the line, you hurt tremendously because you weren't detoxifying. Probably you have some mutation that uh, it inhibits you from detoxifying. Yeah. And that's part of the problem because the more 
more toxins there are, the more building blocks for the new bacteria there are. Yeah. So you need to do aggressive detox and aggressive treatment it goes hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And if you if you don't get rid of the biofilms, then forget it. Don't waste your time in getting treatment because yeah. you will not go anywhere. You yeah. will not get anywhere with a, 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 a ton of doxy and, and, and whatever else you were using. So you need to address the biofilm. I need to be quite honest and frank with you right now what I'm doing. I'm taking the H2O2, and just recently I started the other protocol, which was doxycycline, 100 milligrams, three times a day, but fenbendazole, five mils, once a day as well. That's uh, good. Yeah. That's not enough. It's, it's, not, not, it's not that it's not enough. It's targeting one part of the problem. Yeah. You have a, 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 a dog has four legs. Yeah. And you have to grab each of the legs for that dog to not move. The same thing with Lyme. It has at least four important problems. Yeah. And you're only targeting one with the with the antibiotics. Yeah. I'm taking. Um, what else do I take at the moment? I take some diatomaceous earth in the morning. Um. I drink lots of lemons to try and pH the body and get the pH balance up and alkaline the body. Listen, if you want, imagine that the infection is, like I said, spread out in your cell. Yeah. And your cells are not uh, in, the, in the gut only. Your cells are floating in the blood, floating in the plasma, floating in the lymph nodes. Yeah. So you need injected treatment. Uh -huh. Oral treatments are not going to be sufficient for you. No, no. So, uh, you know, e even though you're doing at least something and you're not with your arms crossed, but you need to be more aggressive than what you're doing. Mm -hmm. How come these, my body, I don't know whether you've come across this with any Morgellons patients, but at the moment, the, the reason why these things freak me out more than anything is because... I've actually seen insects hatch from the head on the scalp. I, I watched like fruit flies come from the scalp when I massaged lemon juice into the scalp. And people said, no, this is impossible. I said, listen, it, ne it nearly sent me over the top because people are saying, no, that's impossible. You can't hatch insects from the body. And I said, well, I did. Uh, it, that, that could be in addition to it. And there, there could be several subtypes of Morgellon. Some people carry more than one type of Morgellon. Some people carry more than one type of parasite. So everything is possible. I just feel like I'm an experiment. I just feel like I'm a walking experiment. The hairs on my body, I've always been methodical from, a, from an early age. I've always been cleansing, cleaning, looking after myself, priming myself, making myself look good. And since this started two years ago, the hair started to fall out on my head. Then hair started to replace the hair that fell out on the head, which doesn't even resemble hair underneath a microscope because I took samples and looked at it. And then all the hair started to grow in places on the body that I never used to have hair. And at the age of 50, 56, for hairs to start growing in places that you never had hairs. But the thing is, they don't even resemble the hair I had before. I feel like a walking freak show. You know, it's sent me over the top quite a few times and I've thought, I'm, I'm a Christian, I believe in God and, and that's what keeps me going. And anybody else that was subjected to the symptoms that I've been getting, they would have topped themselves a long time ago because like I said, I just feel like a freak show. Things, I just feel like somebody has done something to me and it's some kind of experiment. That's the way it feels. No, well, it's a, it's a, a published disease. It's a disease that I see often. I don't think it's someone that, that did something directly to you. Uh, I mean, you're free to believe what you want. Yeah. But at least in my experience, this is a disease. You're not the only person I have talked to that has this disease. And you're not the only person that I've seen that has things hatching from the skin. From the skin. So obviously you have a bunch of things that you need to work with. And you need to get proper treatment. Yeah. So that's the only thing I can tell you. Uh, and and I'm and I'm sorry that you're dealing with it. I, I I truly am. 
Um, and I wish to help you. I think that a case like yours, I, I, I would at least require to see you in person. So, yeah. Um, I, I'm going to suggest to you uh, a, a very basic treatment uh, approach of injected anti antibiotics and injected, injected treatments. And we can sort of go from there. And if you are in Mexico, you, you shouldn't have any problem coming and visiting me. Uh, I get people from Australia, from Ireland, from everywhere. Yeah. So you, you should be the closest patient, at least that I have seen in, in this year. I made my way here purposely because I read about you and, you know, I could see that you were the only person in Mexico. And I was thinking, this is ironic because I was on the way to Mexico and then I found information on a Morgellons page and then I was like, well, this is too much of a coincidence. And then I landed in Mexico City on Christmas Day, would you believe, with the leader of the Labour Party from England. And I spoke to him at great length in the airport and I said to him, look, you know, you're testing people for Lyme and telling them that it's negative. I said, the statistics state that 50% of those people that you're testing are false and, and you need to start looking at things differently. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I take it on board. I'm going to take it on board what you're telling me. I said, well, somebody needs to. I said, because there's so many things killing people, autoimmune diseases. I said, then it's being brushed under the carpet. I said, and you're doing the wrong tests. And then you're getting psychiatrists brought in from Germany. There's a professor, Peter Lepping. He's, he's the devil in disguise because he was on my initial consultation in an infectious diseases clinic in Liverpool. He was in the infectious diseases clinic initial consultation. And I said, why is there a psychiatrist in this consultation? It's protocol. I said, nonsense. That's not protocol. I said, you are pre- you, 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 You've been playing around, unfortunately, as other patients with your, uh, with your uh, disease. And, uh, you know, you, you, you should... Clean yourself from all of it. I think um, if you do bloods on me, you're, and you do the right bloods looking at the cellular structure and the for parasites and whatever else you look for, I believe that your blood results are going to reveal quite a lot. Listen, and then I won't, I, I won't even, uh, just do that. I will put your blood in the microscope and determine a lot of things that are going on, and I will treat you if you allow us to. Uh, I can give you. IV ozone, IV UV light, IV hydrogen peroxide, IV silver, IV antibiotics. The sky is the limit. Uh, but, uh, you know, there are already some uh, research that, uh, that suggests that some treatments will be effective for a case like yours and that I have personally done for other patients. So I'll put together... A have you cured many people of small gallons? Uh, it, you know, it, it, there's not such a word as cure. Have you, have I, you put I, it into the mission? They have gotten better, yes. Yeah. They have gotten better, yes. Yeah. Because right now, I'm concerned about the heart and lung issue. Because if there's something growing in there, fibre, filaments, whatever it is, I mean, I feel like there's a horse hair in growing deep into the back in my lung. And I just feel if I can grab it externally and pull, like I did with the one in the leg, I think that's going to come out the lung. Because this stuff, when I looked at it, I, I kept one. It's in my wallet. I, I pulled it from the leg. It felt like I was removing a bullet from my shin bone in my leg. And when I pulled and pulled and pulled, this hair just kept coming and coming and coming. Eventually, when it came to the end, it was like trying to pull a knot out of the skin. I pulled it so hard, I was in so much agony, I stuck it underneath the microscope. It looks like a 12-inch hair coiled at the end with another cable, like an electric cable wrapped around underneath the microscope. It is bizarre stuff, really bizarre. Well, that, that, that's the behavior of uh, different cells. I mean, uh, I, 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 I believe you. But my back right now, I have holes in my back. And if I put... I've been putting some... Um, hydrogen peroxide from the chemist to dry the lesions out because I'm getting so much pain from the lesions in my back right now and they're right down the spine well, that, that's, the, that's the problem that it, it also affects the nerves uh, and when the nerves are affected the pain is just very relentless um, 
like I said, uh, William, it's uh, it, it's not a phone call kind of job. <laughs> I, w I would prefer to see you in person. Um, usually, I you know I can give you an idea of uh, you know what's gonna happen uh, and, uh, and 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 how it's gonna go down yeah. if you come and see me. So I'm going to suggest that to you. Um, and at least if you don't uh, stay for treatment, at least I'll give you guidance on to what to do for yourself. Yeah. So, so I, I, I put that on the table. I, I'm willing and uh, able to help you, and I'm happy to see you because you're a very interesting case. So um, uh, we, we have our doors open for you. I'll send you a protocol through Monica, who uh, may have been in touch with you. Yeah. And uh, and you can you can check it out and and research about it and also uh, determine if it's something you see uh, uh, fit for you. Okay. Is there anything you can suggest before I see you that I can do to maybe eliminate something or, de or detox the body? I, I, I cannot because I don't know you well enough okay. to tell you. Once that you have at least seen me once in person, then of course we can continue to be on the phone in the future chatting about your follow-up yeah. that is that i never just release a patient and discharge them i i do follow-ups with my patients because I and that my friends is me more gallons in a nutshell i have been across the world i have fought for answers i have fought for people I have been called a fake, a scammer. I have been ridiculed. I have been stopped from making funds to research. I will ask you again. If I am to find an answer and help people, I need help. I need your financial help. If you are financially able to help me, I would ask that you donate to my PayPal, more gallons. I will leave the link underneath. I am exhausted, but I fight on for me and for the people who I truly love that have been afflicted by this illness. March the 16th, 2018. I love you all. God bless.